Dying Light the Beast is an open world action survival horror game developed by Techland, coming three years after Dying Light 2 Stay Human. Running its in-house proprietary engine, this game supports DLSS, FSR, XCSS, and frame generation, though the game currently does not utilize ray tracing. Is your GPU up for playing it? And starting out our testing with VRAM at the very low quality setting, the game uses roughly 6GB of VRAM, and there's not a big difference between 900p and 4K, at least when it comes to memory utilization. And that holds true when we bump up to the high quality preset, with the game requesting just over 8GB at 4K. Enabling frame generation does add considerably to the overall VRAM usage, now needing more like 10 gigabytes, at least with an NVIDIA card. In terms of performance deltas between the preset, there's not a big difference between each of them, with the lowest possible settings only giving you a 15% performance boost. Though there really isn't a big difference in quality when looking at all the different presets, so the very modest performance gains are paired with an equally modest visual penalty. With all that out of the way, let's get on to the performance benchmarks. And with no ultra quality preset available, we'll be testing on high. And with that, the performance is pretty good. Only a few cards, namely the RTX 4060, ARC A770, RX 7600 XT, and RTX 3060, fail to produce 60 FPS, but are close enough that you could probably get there with lower quality settings. The RTX 3060 Ti and RX 9060 XT are both good for above 60 FPS. And if you are looking for a 100 FPS experience, you could get that with an RTX 3090 Ti or an RX 9070. With the fastest card currently available, the RTX 5090 producing above 200 FPS. With the fastest AMD card, the RX 7900 XTX falling a bit behind the RTX 4080. So this game does lean a bit more towards Nvidia, at least with these settings and resolution. The bump to 1440p doesn't really change the order up, but now the RTX 5090 is good for 179 FPS, and the RX 7900 XTX is good for a flat 100 FPS. If you are looking for a 60 FPS experience at 1440p though, you can get that with an RX 7800 XT or the RTX 5060 Ti, which is really punching above its weight. With the older and more entry level cards now producing closer to 30 FPS, so at 1440p, you'll want to enable upscaling on those cards. The jump up to 4K though is a bit too much for most of these cards, and you'll probably need a combination of lower settings, upscaling, and maybe even frame generation to play at 4K. If you are looking for a native 4K though, at 60 FPS, you can still get that with an RX 7900 XTX or an RTX 4080. With the RTX 5090 being the only card able to produce above 100 FPS at ultra high definition. If you want much more than that though, you'll probably need to resort to upscaling. Enabling the quality preset on DLSS does allow it to climb up to 147 FPS, with the performance preset bumping that up to 170 FPS. And for ultra high frame rates, you can always enable frame generation, hitting almost 400 FPS on DLSS quality with 4x frame generation enabled. Moving over to the RTX 5070 Ti does present a pretty similar story, though the gains are smaller as you dial down the DLSS settings. Still, if you do need 200 FPS plus, you can achieve that at 1440p with the DLSS quality setting with frame generation turned on. Moving over to the RX 9070 XT, and at 1440p, we can achieve above 100 FPS with FSR set to quality, Though similar to what we saw with Nvidia, there isn't much of a performance boost by moving up to the performance preset. Though thanks to a smaller penalty when enabling frame generation, this card is also able to achieve above 200 FPS at 1440p. The RTX 5060 Ti at 1080p follows a similar story to all these other cards, with very small gains from DLSS, but being able to achieve above 200 FPS if you enable frame generation. Same goes with the RX 9060 XT at 1080p, with its max performance with frame generation coming in at 177 FPS. 